Enter the world of the unexplained with Paranormal M. Subscribe and turn on notifications to embark on a journey into the supernatural. We promise to keep you intrigued with our captivating tales of the mysterious and the paranormal. Why you should trust your instincts in life. When I was 19 in the Canadian military back in 1981, I was going on a month's leave for a trip to the UK and then France. The night before I leave, this guy Perry, who I hardly knew just to say hi in the halls now and then, had heard of my trip and asked me to have a few beers in his room. Sure. So Perry asked me if I'm into the paranormal. Again, yes, as I had grown up with an Acadia and French mother and was well versed. The short version of this story is Perry tells me that he goes into a trance but can't remember what he says. Dude tells me a few things that I can't recall. Said I was going to have a good time and not a great time, which was true as I had to constantly keep my wits about me. But then he says, you're going to meet a dark haired woman in Switzerland who is going to want you to go with her. But if you do, you will not come home alive. Okay. So after I tell him I have no plans in going to Switzerland, Perry says, Dude, I'm never wrong about these things. Fair enough. I leave the next morning and totally forget about Perry. The military plane travels to Ottawa to pick up some senior officers. And then I'm putting the final touches on my trip. Remember, this was 1981. Old school. No social media, just outdated Europe on $10 a day kind of books. The captain suddenly says that the plane is being rerouted to our base in West Germany. So I'm like, okay. Now start from scratch as the original plane would have taken up far too much time. Okay, so we arrive in West Germany. I travel through the Western Europe, and finally when I'm on the trail headed to Geneva, Switzerland from Austria, a dark-haired woman approaches me in the corridor of the train. Just starts chatting me up, like where I'm going. Kind of plain Jane, like the cartoon character in the old Scooby-Doo cartoons in the 70s kind of a look. She asks me if I want to spend some time with her for a few days. Sure, I'm 19, why not? We arrived at the station, I think it was like Lucien. And then I'm waiting, she starts walking up and down the platform. I'm like, okay, so... She looks at me and says very angrily, No, you stay here, I'm waiting for my brother. I'm like, okay, you lady, you're not that hot anyway. Then as I can still remember, it was like it was yesterday. I'm looking at the train on the right platform, getting ready to leave for Geneva. I look at her again, and then Perry's words come crashing into my head. Man, I nearly fainted. As she walked further down, I ditched her, got onto the train as the conductor, and took my pass. I just calmly walked over to a cubicle and watched as she looked into the windows of the train with some man who was yelling at her in German, I think. Then they walked away as the train pulled out. I soon enter Geneva, then head back to the base in West Germany. When I arrive home, though, I see Perry, and he asks, Well, I told him the truth. He just looks at me and says, Dude, I am never wrong. You would have been killed. In a few months, I'm gone, and on to bigger adventures in life. Now, after 40 years plus, I still think of that time and actually told this story with my wife a few years ago. Mediums in Havana, Cuba This story happened back in January 2015. My wife and I decided to take a bucket list trip to Havana, Cuba. Ever since seeing Godfather 2, I had always wanted to see this city. When we left the plane in Veradero, the bus was to take us to our hotel in Havana. Havana is not exactly like you see in the pictures of old run-down tenements that look like the 1860s. 
There are some very modern areas of the city that look like 1996, but that's another story. On the bus, this lady began to chat with my wife. Now, normally, we don't talk to other tourists, simply because I'm traveling to enjoy the city or the country, not talk to other Canadians who I just saw a few hours ago. The lady starts talking to my wife, and only my wife. As I look out the window, I hear familiar names and places from the early 90s. Turns out this lady from Canada is a professional medium who'd lived with my mother in the early 90s in Fredericton, New Brunswick. My wife was intrigued being Barbadian, British, but I was more like, uh, just leave us alone? The lady kept staring at me and saying the word forgiveness. My mother and I had not been really on good terms before she had passed several years earlier. In truth, I had not seen her since 1996. I just looked at her and said, yeah, well, it works both ways. I'm not sure why I behaved in such a manner. I just wasn't in a mood for any paranormal stuff, so I just had more than my share in life and growing up as a kid, too. Later at the hotel, I told my wife to trash her business card. But as we talked, I really thought upon what odds were that this woman had not only known my mother, but on that particular day, on that particular month, on that particular year, in all the cities in the world, she'd have been going to Havana and delivered this message. No ghosts, no orbs or creepy skinwalkers, just something I can't explain. What are the odds? Billions to one. Not exactly like bumping into the local mall with somebody that you know. Just one of those incidents that make you wonder how it all plays out. Taking the subway in Toronto in the 1980s. This story happened around 1985. I was 23 working on a night shift in Toronto. I really hate working the midnight shift, but it was part of my job working at Atlantic Packaging in East Toronto. I was on the subway heading east towards Kennedy Station in Scarborough. Like most blue-collared guys, I had a routine on which bus to take so I could arrive on time and all that. I got on the Coxwell Station sitting at the front of the car. Now this was in the days when the subway late night was far less crowded than today. I distinctly remember to this day across from me was a man just reading his paper. And a few guys further down just sitting there as bored as I was. That's Kennedy Station at the last stop. I had plenty of time to see who was around me. Just being smart in the big city. So the train goes by, station after station. Very little crowd. As the train pulls into Kennedy, I'm standing at the doors just as I do today at Kennedy. And I feel someone moving right behind me. I had, as I recall, one of those what-the-fuck moments because there was no one around me at all, just the guy in the front who had walked down to the next door. I turn around and right behind me, like literally two feet, is this woman with black hair just staring at me and smiling. I look at her like, what are you doing here? Where are you come from? But you were not on this train. Again, there were no women in that car. None when I arrived at Kennedy, so I step off the train and just stand there as she walks up the platform. I can still remember her, dark hair wearing clothes from the mid to early 1970s, feathered hairstyle like a flowered print shirt with gray slacks, a woman you would have seen from one of those old Kojak shows. I just stood there thinking, well maybe I just missed her. But she was quite attractive, as I recall, and I would have noticed her. One thing I do remember were her eyes. She just looked at me with these freaked-out looking eyes, like a sinister smile like some old 70s vampire movie. Still gives me the willies to this day, even writing this. So I run upstairs to see if she came up, and nada, nothing. She was nowhere. And I look around, and nothing found the guy who was in front of me waiting for his bus. I asked him, do you remember me on the train? He said, yeah, you were the guy across from me. I then asked him, do you remember an attractive woman sitting near me? He looked at me and just says, nope. Just no one else in our part of the car. 
thanked him, walked away. I can only assume that she was the spirit of a woman who may have committed suicide on the trains back in the early to mid-70s. Even now, as I walk along that platform, I still think upon that woman and why she appeared to me. On the way to work at Nike in Toronto in 2001, past the graveyard. Now this is one of those strange experiences I can't explain. No ghosts, no demons, no aspirations. As I once worked at Nike in Canada in Scarborough back in the early 2000s, this occurred. I started my shift at 5 a.m., so I would leave home around 4.20 the company was literally only a 20-minute walk from my home, so I saved a ton of TTC money. This little cemetery on Brimley Road is one of those old-styled vertical headstone types with a closed fence. One morning in the late fall, I was walking past. They had just finished putting a fence in the front a few days earlier. <laughs> Lucky me. When I approached, I started hearing a sound like someone dragging their feet through the leaves, matching my stride. First, I thought it was just an animal scurrying in the underbrush at this part of Scarborough. It's got plenty of woodland. But then as I walked, I could feel it wasn't an animal. At first, again, I thought it was just some kids playing a prank, but at 4.30 in the morning, the gate was locked, so I stopped, and it stopped. I walked. It walked. I couldn't see inside because it was quite foggy and the bush was thick as it was well, still dark. Finally, my creep meter went off, and I said loudly, Hey man, you ever gonna, like, not be playing these smart games with people you don't know? Thought I would hear some kids yell, some kind of bullshit, run off, but nothing, just cold silence. But I could feel it looking at me, just staring. Walked a little further toward the street, but I kept my pace until I passed by, and then nothing. Since that time, I've walked past the cemetery thousands of times. But nothing has ever happened since. Who knows? Riding the TTC back in the early 2000s. Riding the TTC in Toronto is always a challenging expedition, especially during the last few years. This post is more about my unusual encounters than the paranormal. Or perhaps just a strange occurrence that may have an explanation, or both. The first one involved this elderly black lady. I'm on one of those old payphones at Kennedy Street on second level, just standing there talking to whomever. When this older black lady just walks up to me and asks me how to get it to Warden Street, this can easily be explained as just some nice older black lady walking up to a stranger and asking directions. I understand that, but what was strange was that she walked through the upper levels of Kennedy Street, past numerous people and the TTT staff members, and walked down those crappy old stairs at Kennedy that would have been a severe challenge for someone of her age. I believe she had told me that she was in her 80s, ignoring the lower level escalator and then walking right up to someone who was already talking on a payphone. I only remember seeing her approach me, not actually walking down the stairs, and yet, I was staring straight ahead. Again, it's the TTC. Nice lady walks right up and says, Excuse me, sir, can you tell me how to get to Warden Street? I still remember her lovely face as I gave her directions that I knew she wouldn't remember. So I hung up the phone and told her that I would escort her personally. She looked so helpless. I remember asking her where her family was, so, you know, she shouldn't be traveling the TTC alone. She just looked at me with this look of sadness and said, She was all alone, had no family. Man, I felt bad. I could see she looked so frail and alone, like seeing her grandmother just walking about on her own without anyone. So I take her to Warden Street. She tells me she's okay and thanks me gently and just walks away. I told my wife, who's then my girlfriend, about the experience, and being Barbadian, she said that it was like she was looking through the crowd and knew that somebody that, you know, you would be the only person that would help her. 
Just one of those experiences that, again, can easily be explained, but was it paranormal? I don't think so. Not in the traditional sense, but... Strange happenings at home I can't explain. Two months ago I heard a loud groan type noise over my head while watching TV on my couch. It lasted about four seconds. I immediately stood up and turned the lights on. Listen to the street sweeper go by my house. Sorry. I thought maybe it was an animal in the attic, but it sounded like it was right above my head. Since then, I've heard knocking on my front door. I have a camera out there and it only activates when it detects movement. It never catches the knocking, but it is reoccurring. Sometimes it sounds like it's coming from the wall. It's fast and it doesn't repeat, but it does happen. Things in the house keep moving around. There's even an instance of this on my Instagram where the entire bin of cat treats are in the middle of the kitchen floor. I only noticed that they were there because I heard my cat eating them. It perplexed me how they got there. That isn't the only thing moving around. Last night next to my bed I put my Gatorade down on my nightstand. When I went to go for it, it was now moved to the floor a quarter of the way underneath my bed. This morning I noticed a cup that had been tucked away in the back of the cabinet since I moved here. It was now dead center on the kitchen countertop. I have cameras set up in my house in case it's me sleepwalking, but so far I haven't caught anything on camera. I don't know what exactly is happening, but something is happening. My work bathroom is definitely haunted. Okay, I'm a male, 19. I started working at this restaurant a few months ago. The women's bathroom at my work had always given me bad, like, energy since I started working there. And today I feel I finally think I'm actually right. So let me go over the evidence. For context, there's three stalls and a sink next to the door. At first, the second stall would just kind of always be closed and a light would flicker. It'd be like that every morning. I would always ask everyone, who closed the stall? And everybody would say no. I also clean them every night and make sure to leave it open and every morning I come back it's closed. And that light is always flickering. Not a big deal, but whatever. Which brings me to my second evidence. So I also change the toilet paper in each of the stalls throughout the day. I need a key to open them. This one time I was doing my job normally and I went to the middle stall and the light was kind of weird but at the time didn't think about it much. I opened the paper holder, put the paper in, closed it and made sure it was closed shut. As soon as I go to walk out of the stall it slammed down and the light just cut off scaring the shit out of me in the process. Still weird, you know. I have a lock, so maybe it didn't do it all the way. Now this leads me to my third evidence. Since the heater is connected to the women's room for some reason, it's super hot in there. Anyway, recently every time I go to the middle stall, I always get a chill and I get cold, even though everywhere else in the bathroom is very warm. That's not all. I also kind of more recently been getting the feeling something's watching me and I get all paranoid. My body also feels the urge to run every single time after I finish cleaning the middle stall. So that's all my experience for now, but I'll give updates if more happens, but what do you guys think? Am I just paranoid? Running for my life from a shadowy figure. It was about six years ago. So I was around 13. For some context on the story, I lived in a small town and it was not the best. It was like people went on walks with baseball bats because it wasn't a very nice neighborhood. On top of that, almost everybody had pit bulls. Anyway, I had my one friend that lived behind me. 
He was my best friend at the time, and he was maybe 16, and he was super into all that creepypasta stuff. At the time, I wasn't really exposed to that stuff, but he basically always scared me into thinking that they were real and would always try to jump out and scare me. This will come up later, so the experience starts very late at night. Local park. It's in the neighborhood that was down the street from our house. I wasn't really keen on going there due to the neighborhood. We ended up going anyway, and this park is pretty small. There's like a small pond next to it, but the key thing was that this lining in the back of the park and pound was like a forest with a small wire fence. So it was close to midnight, very dark out. Only a lamppost lit the area next to the park. It was pitch black, dark forest. So I remember that we're playing with Nerf guns, just like out on the old park structure, when all of a sudden I turn my friend, and he just stops in his tracks, shocked. He looks towards the forest. Obviously, I'm freaked out, and he thinks he's just joking, like, hey, dude, cut it out. He doesn't even respond as he starts picking up his Nerf guns and looks me dead in the eyes and says, dude, run. Then starts sprinting down the street. And to my surprise, I look back toward the forest, and I see a black figure sprinting out of the forest towards us. My adrenaline kicks into high gear, and I start sprinting and screaming as we run to his house, which is down the street, only catching glimpses of this figure gaining on us. We eventually run up to his door, run in, and slam the door behind us, breathing super hard. We both looked at each other and said, I, I say you saw that, right? He nods. His parents walk in shortly after and ask us what's wrong, so we explain to his dad and ends up looking around outside of the flashlight and finds nothing. They calm us down and say it was probably a jogger or something, and to this day I still have no clue what happened or what that figure was. Better yet... What would have kidnapped if I, well, really, what would have happened if I fell or something? Don't know why I said kidnapped. What do you guys think? Was it a jogger or maybe a crackhead? What is this? So I've just moved into this house with my husband almost a month ago. Nothing really started happening that caused any concern for either of us until recently this past week. At the start, on Monday, I heard what sounded to be light tapping against the wall and meowing. Logically speaking, I thought maybe it was just the cold that caused the tapping, and that the meowing came from outside on the shed next to the house. That is, until I actually thought about it. The meowing sounded like it was in our bedroom in the midst of the night. On Tuesday, I get the most uncomfortable feeling of being watched, even though I'm alone and my husband is at work. The feeling of it being like, like, feeling like I'm being chased up the stairs at night. It's like something had hit the trash bag downstairs and then it sounded like something running up. On Wednesday, I woke up at night from a noise of some kind. It sounded like somebody was slamming the edge of a credit card on the bathroom counter. It's like just outside my bedroom door. This continues for 30 to 40 minutes until it just stops. I peek into the hallway just to make sure I'm not hearing things and possibly seeing things either. After that, the sound of something heavy fell into that trash can and started rummaging around. And today, Thursday, it's possibly one of the creepiest things that's ever happened so far. I know I'm not just going crazy. My husband and I were downstairs making breakfast. Let's tell him about what happened last night. While we were talking, we just kind of went quiet and looked at him. As if I was about to piss my pants scared. It was the sound of a credit card again, but this time in the coat closet, not in the bathroom. Fast forward a few hours when he goes to work. The sound of somebody slamming into my downstairs bathroom. Then came the knocking around five. Not continuous, but semi-frequent. I've been extremely jumpy since all of this started happening. I did answer a few and said that this house is military housing, built in the 1950s during World War II. I've been digging into this online and have talked to several of my neighbors about the people who were here before. They only stayed for three months. This could be explained for multiple reasons because, you know, when you're in the military, you don't just send your house for a couple of months, even if you're on track for retiring, but... 
I'm going to look deeper and ask housing about the people who lived here before and hopefully snag more information about this house. Another thing is, if this house was made so weird, my husband can actually see in the bathroom all the way beside the trash can. I've woken that poor man up so many times due to this noise. So now, that somewhat cleared up, I'll say that since last night, the only thing that was unusual was my dream and the normal clicking sound at night. I might get the house blessed. I was supposed to do that beforehand, but completely forgot due to how fast we'd move in. My house is haunted. Instance one. I was probably like 13 at the time. We just moved into my house and my family went out to eat. But I didn't really want to since it was late and I don't really like eating too late. This means it was just me in the house. I was sitting down on the sofa with my cat watching a movie when out of nowhere I heard a man's voice behind me say, Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. My cat didn't seem to acknowledge it, but I heard it as clear as day, and when I turned around, obviously nobody was anywhere to be found. Instance 2. Probably about the same age I had, I believe, to be about a trickster or demon of some sort around. I would trip over seemingly nothing and hear laughter right next to me. I would also place things down in my bedroom only to find them gone. Nowhere to be found. When I went back for them, obviously my first instinct was that my siblings had taken them. But nobody had gone into my bedroom beside me. Eventually I would just say, Could you put my... Insert item here. Back, please. Thank you. And suddenly it would be back exactly where it was before. Instance 3. Probably about a year or two later, so I was like maybe 14 or 15. I was going up to the mountains behind my house for a hike. But it was dry season, so all the prickly bushes and such were all over the hill. So I turned around to go back home, and I'm walking back home, and I hear indistinct talking, and then what sounds like somebody muttering through a megaphone. It sounded like it was right in front of my house. Definitely would have been heard from inside, so I ran inside and asked my mom what all the noise was. What noise? Instance 4. About three months ago, so I'm like 18 at that time. My grandfather had gotten sick in another country and wasn't doing too great. My mother had this weird feeling that he was lost. I had gone into the den of my house and started pacing a bit because I have anxiety and that's what helps me not panic. As I'm walking, I see out of the corner of my eye somebody following me, feet behind mine, glimpses of a face when I turn. But only out of the corner of my eye, never in full sight. Instance 5, about a week ago actually. My mother and sister and I, coincidentally the only people in my house that believe in the supernatural, were standing near the fireplace talking about whether or not my mother was going to buy my grandfather's ashes from the funeral home in another country. All of a sudden we heard a loud bang on the wall at my mother's mailbox which keeps letters and bills and such fell to the floor. It was nailed into the wall. The only things that fell out were her checkbook, a pen, and a few old credit cards. Guess my grandfather really wanted her to pay for him. My interaction with the alleged Zozo through a Ouija board. So it's probably 9.30 p.m., April 2018. My girlfriend, her buddies, and I were in a backyard having a bonfire at a typical night for that time of year in our area. A little chilly and it was dark out. To give you an idea of the layout of the yard, there's maybe a block-long driveway. Longest driveway I've seen in person that doesn't turn. And it leads up to her house. Surrounding her house is a huge apple orchard. So she has no neighbors on either side. Her backyard is huge with a bonfire and a little play park for kids and a trampoline. We were sitting by the bonfire. My girlfriend, her friends, and I were getting a little bored, so we started to think about making a homemade Ouija board. One of her friends started making one, so we decided to go for it. Just for the record, I've never used a Ouija board in my life before this. This is a unique experience for me, and it's my first one ever. 
first time we did it, the stone we were using to cover up the letters kept moving around in circles and zigzags. After that, we closed it and said goodbye. Then, maybe ten minutes later, we decided to open it up and try it again. Once we tried it again, it almost started doing the same thing. But then it went off the board and started going towards one of my girlfriend's friends. She started to freak out and just kind of, well, she started to freak out and started my girlfriend. I don't know what that means. She started to freak out and started my girlfriend, so we grabbed the stone and wanted to close it again. So we said goodbye and closed it. Maybe half an hour later we used it for the last time, and it was definitely the most interesting. Freaky thing that happened that night, by far. So we opened the Ouija board and welcomed any spirits to come and speak with us. We asked if there was a spirit there with us, and all of a sudden it drew its hand over yes. We asked who we were talking to, and then it told us we were talking to a little girl. We asked how old she was. I think she said she was 12, and this is when it gets creepy as fuck. We asked what happened to her, then it didn't move for maybe five seconds, so we asked again. Maybe five more seconds passed, and the stone started moving to the letters Z and O over and over again. Thought it was saying ah, za, 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 za. <clears throat> Pardon my French. But one of our friends who heard about Zozo told us about him after that happening. We asked why he did that, and what he did, and I don't think we got an answer for that one. We then said goodbye, closed the board, and we were done with it. My girlfriend and I woke up the next morning, and I shit you the fuck not that I woke up with a bruise the size of maybe four grapes. Then the next morning, I woke up with three claw-like thick red marks on my bruise. Two days later, the bruise is the size of two grapefruits. Scary. Two-year-old son claims he sees a ghost every night. Exactly like the title says, my two-and-a-half-year-old son keeps mentioning that he sees a ghost, and it's been almost daily. Every night for about two weeks now at our house, my fiancé is 26, and so am I. FYI, the first time that this happened was on our first night after moving to our new house in Illinois. We moved only about 10 minutes away from our previous house. No, the house is not old. It was built in 2008, and there's been no deaths here. Also, he never said this at our old place before we moved here. I was putting my little man down in his crib for the night. And, like I've done every single night for over a year, I said goodnight to all of the stuffed toys in his room, and then him. Then I kissed him on his hands. Something he's had me do for quite a long time every night. As I walked to the door to leave the room, I walked outside of his room, turned around to look at him with the door open, and said, Good night. Love you. Like I do every night. Now, instead of him saying night, night, love you too, which he always does, he simply laid in his back, pointed to, and I know this sounds corny as fuck, but the corner of his room. Then he said very clearly, Ghost. I was like, what the fuck? Did I just hear that right? So I asked, what'd you say, bud? And he replied, in the accent of a toddler, ghost to my room. He didn't seem scared or shocked or anything, but to be honest, I was a little weirded out, so I just said, you're okay, bud, where? He pointed at the corner again and said, ghost. Told him not to worry, to try to get some sleep. And said again to him, Good night again to him and just told him I loved him again and repeated, just ghost. He looked at me and said, love you, Dada, then closed the door. Now, before I go on, I just want to say that we've never talked about or mentioned anything about ghosts with or around him. There isn't one situation I can even think of that we've ever talked about ghosts in front of him or with him. And even if we did, he's freaking two and a half years old. Pretty sure he wouldn't have even had an inkling of remembering or even understanding what we'd be talking about. Also, the kid doesn't even know what death is. 
I don't think he would just saying that just to try to freak me out. Anyways, the next day I asked him if he remembered what he had said to me last night around dinner time at his grandparents' place, my soon-to-be in-laws. And he clearly said, goes to my bed. What the fuck? Well, we all just kind of laughed it off because we all thought maybe he heard something about them at daycare during past Halloween or something. I mean, we really have no idea where else he could have heard about ghosts. Last night he did it too. Pretty much every single night we've been here. Now to be honest, there's no feeling of bad energy here whatsoever. And nobody in either of my fiancés or my family have passed too recently. Does anybody have any experience of the same situation I'm talking about? Either hearing someone talk about it, or having personally gone through something similar with your kid? I'd love to hear what people have to say about this. Because not only is it a little bit weird, but it's pretty consistent. And like I've said in earlier posts, he's never done this in our last place. Not even once. This happened during my mid-teenage years. I had a strange dream that involved me and a group of people I'd never met running through a cornfield while being chased by what I can only describe as living shadows. I woke up in the middle of the night at my back. I sleep on my stomach. I couldn't move any part of my body beside my eyes. And when I say could not move, I mean it. This wasn't like sleeping on your arm, having it got limp and barely responsive, so you have to move it, to, you know, with your other hand, but... I mean, I could literally feel, feel my brain send and my limbs receive, like signals to my nerves and muscles, telling them to move only for them to not so much as twitch. I couldn't even twitch a finger. After a few moments, my brain woke up enough to register sound. I heard a noise that sounded like a perfect blend of a swarm of bees and v... Oh, excuse me, guys. Vuvezelas? Vuvezelas. Perfect blend of a swarm of bees and vuvezelis. I've never heard of this word. I'm so sorry. I turn my eyes to the side of my bed. The bed's against the wall, so I can only look one way, and I see a shadow person standing next to me. It was so dark that it looked like it was absorbing the light in my room, while itself being silhouetted by a thin white glow. The moment my eyes landed on it, the sound grew to the point of being deafening. Its arms were stretched out toward me and fluctuating straight out, then bent, then twisted, then straight again. Its eyes were large pools of swirling light. Just over its shoulders, and my TVs next to my bed, I saw that my VCR, which tells me the time, was flashing. Somehow, while miraculously not pissing myself, I managed to move my lips enough to grunt, Get. Out. Of. My. Room. Immediately, I was able to move and bolted upright. Looked at my VCR, which read 12 or 1 a.m., and I got up, walked to the bathroom, unleashed the torrent of piss that wanted to escape, and went back to sleep. I've had sleep paralysis a few times after, though, and I never really saw that thing again since I would wake up facing the wall or under the covers. But each time it happened, I would say, get out of my room, and would be able to move again. I do not believe in the supernatural that much, but this stands out to me a lot because I've had a terrible memory. Especially when it comes to dreams, but I can remember every moment of this as if it just happened. But I think was it saying, get out of my room, was enough to shock my brain to full wakefulness, and that phrase became a trigger to every time it happened to tell my brain, hey, fucking wake up fully, damn it. Ask Reddit. My sophomore year of college, I was in the library late one night and suddenly heard, hey, in one of my ears, just the one. Now I had headphones and listening to a podcast while writing a paper, so I ignored it at first, but quickly I heard it again louder in the same ear. I took my headphones out, look around and see no one. I hear it again, and it's a harsh, whispered hey in one of my ears. I'm starting to think it's one of my friends pranking me, hiding between the shelves. I go check him out, find no one I know. 
at least who looks like they're trying to get my attention. And this is when I start thinking that someone's messing with me to get me away from my laptop. So I hurry back to my table, but I find everything untouched. At this point, I'm freaked out and decide to go back to my room for the night. I tried rationalizing it like, oh, I'm tired, or maybe I'm just stressed out. But as I'm packing up my stuff, I heard hey in the same low whisper and felt a sudden warmth on my ear. Kind of like when somebody actually is whispering into it. I hurried out of there as fast as I could without drawing attention to myself. Called my sister to tell her what happened. She told me that it was probably someone messing with me. Or just overheard someone behind me in another room or around a corner. That's when I told her that I was sitting at a table in the corner of the room. My back to the wall and my ear that I heard the whispers in I was facing the closed window on the third floor of the library. Ask Reddit. A woman walking in my house, all dressed in red clothes in the middle of the night. I was five at the time, and was sleeping between my mother and father in their bed. At this time, my parents and the neighbors couldn't really sleep because of a woman that kept shouting my father's name the whole night until the sun started to rise. Every day. The neighbors wanted my family to move after that. For my mother, creepy things happened to her her whole life. Like hearing people talking to her while she was laying in bed, saying they would kill her and me if she opened her eyes. I was a baby at the time. Seeing people walking through the house in the middle of the night, usually 3 a.m., and it happened recently. Objects being thrown out of nothing or more. She told me that since she was six years old, a tall albino man dressed in white smoke would appear and keep observing her through windows and breaches up on the planks of the house. She grew up on a small farm. While working on the house of a female friend of hers, she saw a black couple dressed in white standing in the middle of the living room. She was alone with the little boy that day. My grandpa had nightmares every night and couldn't wake up. He screamed vigorously, and even when my grandma and my mother would shake him, he wouldn't wake up. My mother heard people walking inside the house, even when everyone was standing still. It's a farmhouse, by the way. Her dog were beat to death in front of her. My grandma and grandpa out of thin air. There's a lot more creepy things that happened to her. My aunt and uncles, but I'm afraid of telling them because they're much heavier than what I already wrote here. Also, I don't know if it's related, but I rarely have a normal dream. I mostly have nightmares and my father too. It's either I'm being pursued by dead people or I'm raping and murdering people or eating human flesh. Sometimes I don't want to sleep because of the nightmares. Terrible. Ask Reddit. In the middle of the night a few years ago, I saw a figure pass in front of the glow of the alarm clock. It went into the darkness at the foot of our bed. I thought it was an intruder. I had awoken because I thought I heard our apartment door open and close. And then the figure. First, I thought it was my husband. But when I inched my foot over to his side of the bed, I felt him next to me. My heart was pounding so hard I could hardly hear anything else. Till then, I'd always thought it was silly when someone felt afraid that people can hear their heart pound. But I get it now. So after about a minute of staring into the blackness where the figure had disappeared, I grabbed the bedside lamp and threw it at the foot of the bed. I heard it crash into the wall, leap out of bed, and grabbed the flashlight in the dresser, dropped it, made two huge steps to my left, turned on the bedroom light. No one there, just my husband staring at me like I'd lost my mind and the lamp lying on the floor. I explained what happened. He made a sweep of the apartment, even though the bedroom door was shut. The apartment door locked, and there was absolutely no way anybody could have entered without making every single floorboard in that old apartment creak to wake the dead. It was 3 a.m. or so on a Saturday, so we got up some hot chocolate and just watched a few episodes of Frasier until we were both able to calm down. Nice choice. 
I've had sleep paralysis before, and this was nothing like that. Lucid dream? Maybe. Who knows? Ask Reddit. When I was 11, I was sitting in my room with my dog with the door closed. I heard what sounded like my aunt call my name, which caused my dog to also perk up. I ran down the stairs and asked if anybody called my name. My father was the only one in the house and said that he thought my mother yelled for me. I go outside to the garage as my mom's walking in. She said she swore she heard someone yell for her to come in the house. And Well, at 15, it happened again. But this time it was at a different house. My dog was with my mom in the kitchen. I was in my room with the door open. Swore I heard my mother call for me, so I get up and nearly run right into her in the hallway. Turns out she thought I had called for her. I would always hear someone call my name for around four years, and around 20-ish years old too. The first house we lived in had a guy pass away in the living room from a heart attack. Things would fall from the shelf in the bathroom whenever we would take a shower in that house. My sister recently told me how she hated living there because she felt like she was being watched all the time. Since I was around 15 or 16, I've been getting random scratches. I played it off as in like I'm itching myself in my sleep at sort of first, but it always ended up happening whenever my mother was angry at my father or me. They would always be on my upper arms and chest, never lower. My father gets them far less than I do. I stopped mentioning them all together about six years ago, and my mother claimed my dog must have done the latest one when he didn't even sleep in my parents' room since my father had just gotten up for the day. <sighs> long sentence. I've honestly tried to find ways to explain the scratches, but I don't have long nails, and there's nowhere near sharp enough to leave the marks that I get. From now, it has become a small amusement for my boyfriend and I to I guess what exactly my mother is angry about when new scratches appear. Wouldn't surprise me if she has some sort of attachment with how much negativity she gives off. Ask Reddit I used to love the paranormal stories, especially ghost stories as a kid. I devoured books like Real Ghosts, and then I watched an episode of Sightings, Ghosts, that changed my life. A ghost couple were haunting a family. The mom confronted the male ghost and told him that he was not allowed to harass or frighten the kids. And the ghost stopped. It cemented my mind that if you're afraid, the hauntings get worse. The way a bully gets worse. But if you stand up to them, you can refuse consent and they stop. In my teens, I started seeing an orb. Just one orb, but it was a black orb was literally darker than the shadows in my house at night. Mostly didn't have a problem with it since it would always move away from me. It'd just wait till it was moved on and then go on with whatever I was doing. Then one night I was lying in my bed when suddenly I felt a blinding pain in my right eye. I felt like somebody had punched me. There was no one in the room. I ran to the bathroom, turned on the light and looked in the mirror. I looked normal. There was no bruising but just touching the skin around my eye hurt. It felt like there was a massive bruise on the soft tissues. Every time I blinked, it would send a fresh wave of pain through it. Went back to bed and lay down again. Then it felt like someone or something was poking me, jabbing at the bruised feeling with their finger. I rolled to the left. The poking feeling stopped for two seconds, then started up again. I rolled to the right, burying my bruised eye in the pillow. The poking stopped for two seconds and started up again. It was like something was reaching through the pillow just to cause me pain. Finally sat up feeling royally pissed. I said out loud, Stop it! You do not have permission to touch me. You do not have permission to hurt me. Get your hands off me. There was a pause, and then the poking sensation stopped. The pain in my right eye began to fade. I lay down again and fell back asleep. The next morning, my face and eye felt fine. There was still no evidence that I was bruised or physically injured. A few nights later, I woke up to the silhouette of a tall man wearing a hat standing next to my bed. 
I don't know how I pulled it off without getting tangled in my blankets or anything, but I basically jumped to my feet so I was standing on my bed and stood face to face with it. I couldn't see its face or eyes, but I swear we were face to face and just stared right the hell back at it and didn't back down. Then it disappeared. I got some sage and basically saged the whole house, every door, every window, then the actual room cleansed it with the statement negativity and malignancy are not welcome here i sealed this portal and room against them the house felt lighter afterwards then i held the sage underneath my face and said negativity and malignancy is not welcome i shield my body against them took a huge breath of the sage smoke it's weird but i thought i got really bad allergies to smoke or just about anything else the sage smoke didn't trigger those allergies when I exhaled, I felt better too. Never saw the orbs or the hat man again. And I never got hit in the eye again either. Ask Reddit. So I went to college in a town with a giant cemetery with graves dating back to the very late 1700s. My friend lived in an apartment complex that was maybe a quarter mile away, if maybe if that, from the cemetery. She would frequently send me snapchats of weird shit going on in her house, like a dog staring into open and dark closet growling sort of thing. I witnessed that happening in person a few days later, but with the door closed, and the suspense felt like I was opening that closet. It was unnerving. Anyways, I remember that we got together at her place one night to celebrate St. Patrick's Day with some beers and homemade fried food. The way her small apartment was set up was that where you could see into the kitchen from the living room, like an open concept or whatever they call it. I went in there to grab her a beer and myself some food. And as I closed the fridge, I see a glimpse of somebody walking down the hallway to her bedroom. No problem, I just start walking that way while saying, Hey Aaron, here's your beer. All of a sudden, I hear, uh, where are you going? She apparently had been on the couch or I guess the entire time and didn't move a muscle or see anything. Gives me the chills thinking about it. Definitely saw someone walk toward her back room. Ask Reddit. In 2007, my cousin was killed in a car accident. She was the passenger in her boyfriend's car, and he was driving like an asshole. He ended up being fine, but she got hit on her door and passed away. The hospital, a couple of hours later, she lived in Missouri, and most of our family was in New Jersey. I grew up Catholic and never really questioned it. I wasn't really religious, but I didn't really refute it either. When my cousin passed away, I stopped believing in any of it just because I felt like she was stolen from our lives. And if there was God, then why would he ever do something like that to us? When he got engaged, my fiancé's dream was to get married in the church that she went to her whole life. I told her that I didn't want to get married in a church because I no longer believe in it. Kind of angry at the whole thought, and this will matter later. However, my aunt was pretty religious. So she was walking with my uncle on their property and she asked my cousin to show them a sign that she was with them. As they were walking along, they noticed a yellow butterfly by them. I continued to follow them for an odd amount of time since that, you know, at least a yellow butterfly at that time is our family symbol for our cousin. My aunt and my other cousin even got a tattoo of it, but fast forward a couple of months. I'm lying in my bed trying to sleep and I start to get this weird feeling. Something was not right. I know I was wide awake, so it wasn't a dream. I started to hear something, but only in my head. I also started to see something bright, but it wasn't in front of me. It was in my head. Can't really explain it past that. The voice started to tell me that it was my cousin, and she told me three things. One, that I had to get married in a church. She told me it was the only way she'd be able to get to see me get married if I got married in a church. And two, she told me to draw my aunt a picture I draw as a hobby, and in my head I vividly saw the picture to draw. Three, she simply told me 69, 
The mature kid in me giggled a little bit, but then she told me that it would make sense and verify that I was really talking to her. She said the number represented something big and I would understand. This bothered me for quite a while. I searched through the article of the car accident, searching for some representation of 69. Eventually, I gave up. I told my mom about what happened, though. A couple of days later, she wrote me a letter. And at the end of it, it wrote yellow, which is six letters, and butterfly, nine letters. After that, it pretty much verified to me that I did actually talk to her. I eventually did get married in a church and drew my aunt the picture. Not any more religious, but I am glad I got married in the church. I don't know if God exists or if heaven or if any of that stuff, but no one will ever convince me that I didn't talk to my cousin. Ask Reddit. This happened just last week. I was sleeping. I believe it was roughly 2 a.m. My dreamscape was creating this very odd scenario where I was observing a small dog with a terribly disgusting bowel movement that smelled horrible. The smell here is the key. That exact smell actually woke me up. Now I thought perhaps the cat had used his litter box, but upon further inspection the next morning I realized this was not the case. A rotten, nasty, shit type of smell. For those of you who may not know, this smell is often associated with the presence of a demon. In my now half-awake state, I can smell this horrible, horrid stench, and I'm instinctively concerned for my safety. At this point, the next thing I can is recall that I was contorting into this strange and severely uncomfortable position on my bed. I was screaming bloody murder, but no sound was actually coming out. And fast forward, maybe, and I'm in like a dream again. In this dream, I'm very vehemently reciting prayers of this thing over and over and over. Eventually, I believe it must have left. My consciousness or subconsciousness was under a demon attack. I don't know what happened, but I know it affected me enough to freak me out through the next couple of days. Ask Reddit. My parents and I were coming back from a trip to Mexico some years ago and they saw a levitating person. We used to drive to and from our trips to Mexico, so we left that morning at around 4.35ish. Anyway, it's a lot of desert around that part of Mexico, and where we go, it's very hilly too. But there are these small towns in between that we have to go through to get to the main roads. We're probably 20 minutes into our trip when I feel the car slowing down. It didn't make too much, well, I don't make too much of it really, since there's a lot of huge speed bumps around those parts. I was in the back seat playing on a DS and I looked up. My parents were both looking into an alleyway trying to see something. I asked what it was they were looking for, and they described it as a person wearing a white robe. They said it kind of looked like, like E.T., that kind of robe he was wearing at the beginning of the movie. Apparently they had seen this person coming down from floating in the air, they said. When she hit, well, when she hit touched the ground, my parents said that she jet into this alley that was dimly lit in view from the speed bump we were at. I saw the alley and no one there. There were no doors in this alley, no ladders, nothing. No way she could have ran the whole thing. She just kind of vanished. There's a strong belief in witches down in Mexico. My parents are both convinced that they saw a witch that morning. They're both from Mexico, and have both run into paranormal stuff there, including witches. To this day, you can see the awe in their faces whenever they talk about it. And I feel the sleep in my eyes, and I'm going to pass out. Hope you guys too. See ya. My parents and I were coming back from a trip to Mexico some years ago when they saw a levitating person. We used to drive to and from our trips to Mexico, so we left that morning at around 4.35ish. Anyway, it's a lot of desert around that part of Mexico where we go. Very hilly, too. 
but there are these small towns in between that we have to go through to get to the main roads. We were probably 20 minutes into our trip when I feel the car slowing down. I don't make too much of it since there's a lot of these huge speed bumps around those parts. I was in the back seat playing on a DS when I looked up. My parents were both looking into an alleyway trying to see something. I asked what it was they were looking for and they described it as a person wearing a white robe. They said kind of like that thing from E.T. was wearing at the beginning of the movie. Apparently, they had seen this person coming down from floating in the air. When she sort of touched the ground, my parents said that she just jet into this alley that was dimly lit and in view from a speed bump that we were at. I saw the alley and no one there. There were no doors in this alley, no ladders, nothing. No way she could have ran the whole thing. She just kind of vanished. There is a strong belief in witches down in Mexico. My parents are both convinced that they saw a witch that morning. They're both from Mexico, and have both run into paranormal stuff there, including witches. To this day, you can still see the awe in their faces whenever they talk about it. And whenever I say, see ya.